Hello and welcome back to a new video. I'm the Sketch Monkey and today we're gonna have a look at the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Yes, we did the front view last time and if you haven't checked that out, I'm gonna link that video up here in the corner. So you can go check that out. It's going to make more sense if you have, have an idea of what the front view is going to look like and then how we take that design style or the styling of the car and implement that in the rear as well. One thing I really like with the rear design is the, the roof part, but they used graph to make the car look more like a coupe and lower the the roof line visually and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about here in a second overall I think it's the same issue that we have with the front there are too many lines that just go and don't really continue anywhere they just end abruptly into another line and the design in the rear just as with the front it just looks too complicated it's like they're trying too hard to make this new in any kind of way so what i want to do with this redesign is to or modification or whatever you want to call it is to just simplify the design make it simple and make it more relatable to the mustangs of today because i think that's important they called it a mustang so let's make the most out of it and let's make the best out of the situation here and make it more Mustangy. So first of all, I want to talk to you about the small changes that we're going to make. Then we're going to jump into Photoshop as always and make those changes and see how that is going to turn out. So here it is, the Mustang Mach-E in the rear view in the wild here in Iceland or somewhere. I mean, it's a rendering so probably in a CGI world. Anyway, who cares about that? Let's jump into the design of this car and let's talk about the the kind of the, the issues that I have with this car is that, as I said, they're, they're kind of trying too hard to make it look different. So what I mean by that, for example, look at all these lines that we have going here that just connects in a very strange way. So we have this line here, for example, this is one of the lines that I'm talking about. It just goes in here and then we have a plastic chamfer that starts here and goes over this surface here. And I want to extend this and have it be all the way stretching across the rear of the car. And then we have these lines here that I'm not really sure how they go in to the, uh, to the deck lid here. We have the end of the deck lid and then we have these two lines and this is going to create a hole up here, I guess. So there's some sort of uh, opening there because th those lines go into the car and then you have the deck lid kind of cutting these lines off in a very abrupt way and <laughs> cutting lines off in an ab abrupt way is something that to me just ruins a design. And that's one of the, the, that's one of the things we're going to fix here. We're also going to move this, uh, the plate, we're going to move that down here in the black area so we can have a clean looking metal piece right here and then we have the plastic that's where we can put stuff like the the number plates and also uh, there's been a lot of talk about these rear lights I kind of like them actually I think they, they're trying to do something cool here and uh, why why not try to go halfway with the trend that is complete light bars that go all across the the rear of the car but then we have the logo here and that would need to move somewhere up or down and that might look a little bit strange so what i'm going to do i'm going to stick with the basics here and remove these lights i had two choices i can either remove them or i can start to create figure out how to create a light bar that goes across the entire rear of the car and move the the logo and stuff like that and make everything fit but what i'm going to do is remove these extend the height of this so they stretch all the way down here to this point all the way like this and then i want to have this line here i don't this is another uh, very complicated line that we have here the zigzag line here so what i want to do with this is just to create one single line that goes like this all the way down here so this is going to be wider than it is right now or higher than it is right now and I want to have it be black. So I want a black deck lid right here, just as we have at, uh, on the Mustangs today. That is going to create some more resemblance to the Mustang brand as it is, and I think it's going to look a lot better. Now, talking about the graphical elements of this car, this is what I really like about this rear end, is that they used black on top here. And what that does, if you look at this car from a side view, you're going to focus on this 
pillar here, right here, because this is co body colored, and this is going to kind of blend into the background of the car, and you're not really going to notice, or you're going to notice less this height here, because essentially, it, the height of the car goes all the way up here, and then it goes down here. But if we look at it graphically, this black part kind of deletes a bit of the height of the car, and I really like that. Other than that, we're going to do the exact same changes as we did on the front view, which is sharpen up this line right here. I don't understand why there is a radius here. Uh, that's one, you know, these are the key lines that I was talking about in the first video. Just at least make the key lines sharp. You can do play around whatever you want back here, but for if it's going to be a Mustang, you need to have those three key lines be Mustang-y and what we're used to seeing with Mustang. So sharpen this up right here and make a sharp edge there. And then I'm going to create a sharp shoulder line that goes here and that goes into the front fender right there. I want to have a sharp line there and also sharpen this part up because these are the three key lines as I was talking about earlier in the previous video. All right, so enough talk about this. And also, of course, one more thing is to add the GT wheels to that. And yes, I know there is a lot talk about the range of this car and making these changes might reduce the range. But as I said in the previous video, the technology is going to rapidly improve from now on because we have these big brands like Ford jumping on the electrical car um, wagon, which every single brand is going to do eventually. And that is going to enhance the technology and move the technology forward very quickly. So removing five or 10 miles uh, in range in, in, you know, in exchange for a more uh, satisfying design, and especially since this is a Mustang, it's not a big deal to me. I would definitely make that trade off. All right, so that said, let's jump in to the redesign. Let's start doing all of these changes and let's see how it's going to turn out. All right, so let's get into the redesign and let's fix this Mustang and make it more Mustang-y. So before we do that, I wanna ask you for a favor and it's going to take you approximately three seconds to do and that is to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these videos. The thing is I'm trying to reach 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I have about a month and a half to do that and I can only do it with your help so if you enjoy these kind of uh, redesigns and uh, sketching videos subscribe to the channel it will really mean a lot to me now let's have a look at what people are saying about this Mustang this is from my Instagram so Chris Harry ID says Mustang was a revolutionary car for the brand and this will be the same new type of car for a new type of future Ford knows what they're doing. I mean, yes, it is a revolutionary car for sure. I don't disagree with that, but the problem, or it's not a problem, but the, the, the thing that seems to be a bit off is calling it a Mustang when it's an electrical four-door SUV. That's the, that's the issue here that I'm trying to figure out why they did it. And I, as I said in the previous video, I think I know why they did it. And the reason for that is because uh, they want to start slow and they want to introduce the electrical cars to the masses by using as many recognizable and familiar features as possible and that includes the name. But if it was me, I would call it maybe a Ford Explorer Mach-E or something like that. But attaching the Mustang name is kind of to to balance out the fact that electrical cars are perceived to be boring and not sporty. So I think Ford applied the Mustang name to kind of counter that and try to make it feel like this is going to be a very, very cool first electric car for Ford. That's just my theory, but that's kind of what I think happened when they decided to name it uh, Mustang. So let's see what Rene underscore Soma says. I don't think that things were the uh, I don't think that thing's worthy of the Mustang name. Calling it only Mike E would have been nice, in my opinion. Yeah, that's exactly what I just what we just talked about here is to just call it something else than a Mustang and not go all the way to the far spectrum of this what what Ford is doing. They they might as well have called it the Ford uh, uh, GT Mach-E. It would be the same kind of result. It doesn't make sense, but it's trying to compensate for the fact that electric cars are perceived as being boring. It's just my opinion. Tim dropped Tim draws cars says, my theory is that it's a blatant cashing on a 50 plus years of brand equity. Staggeringly stupid move by Ford. Every Mustang 
ever built is a little less cool now. Um, I don't know about if every Mustang is a little bit cool, less cool now, but I get what you're saying because this is going to affect the, the history of Mustang moving forward, of course. Now they have a, a four, four door SUV in that range uh, that they call Mustang. So it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to be perceived. But honestly, I think it's going to be a very, a, a, a success. Because once people get over the fact that they call it a Mustang, essentially it's a very cool car. And I'm really excited to see this out on the streets. Not just because of the, the Mustang name, just because it's a cool electric car. And Ford is actually trying to make uh, electric cars interesting. And not just, you know, uh, like we had 15 years ago with the Yaris, which was, you know super boring car and now i'm really excited to see the performance and the styling of uh, new electric cars and how that design language is going to evolve when we don't need all of these uh, parts inside of the car in the package of the car the engine transmission and so on i think it's going to affect the design of the car and it's going to start a new era of car design where we have the different proportions and different kind of uh, very different styling from what we see today this is just we're just starting now to get into this electric car era. So, of course, there has to be a smooth transition. If a car company comes out with a, you know, insanely futuristic and weird looking design, it, it, you know, chances are it's not going to sell because it's so far away from what people are used to. So companies need to kind of make a smooth transition, call it a Mustang, make it a four door SUV, make it look exactly like a uh, regular car. And then down the road, 10, 15, 20 years from now, we can start experimenting with different packages and so on. Aiden.t, I refuse to accept this as a Mustang. Well, I'm sorry, but that's just a fact. We're all going to have to accept it for what it is. Lego my Crago, I actually like how the Mac E looks, save for the taillights. So I, want, uh, so I wasn't too amped to see what your changes were. I can't read today, but I must admit your tweaks make it look more aggressive, but still mucky. This is a win. Thank you, uh, Lego Micrago. I'm glad you enjoyed the, the redesign. It's just that, you know, I like the car. I, I think Ford did a great work with it. I just think they tried a little bit too hard to make it look cool and make it look different. And there are too many lines going nowhere and too many styling cues that just doesn't make sense. But it's a lot of fun for me because I get to redesign these cars and just put out videos like this. Artificial underscore verte. Maybe if they made it look more like a Mustang and not like a Tesla, it would look good and I would accept this idea. But no, it looks like the aborted child of a Mustang and a Tesla Model S. In my opinion, Ford needs to make some major changes. Uh, yeah, I mean, same thing here. We're going back and back to the same kind of point. To the same point is to... I think they're, they're still trying to figure out their own way and how to create this new E segment that's going to take over the entire car industry in a, in a decade or so. It, this shows that even Ford, a big company, is confused about how to, how to make this change. And uh, all I can say is I'm just excited to see how other companies are going to move into this as well. Derek Storm 1... Uh, they could have gone with another name than the Mustang, to be honest. Yeah, I guess they could. It's not a... Nah, I mean, it is a big deal, but they're trying something new. Uh, B2 Ryan LS. I had no criticism of the car, but watching your video and hearing your point about the sharpness totally changed everything. The roundness makes me think of a Mustang Mach 3 and that 90s Ford design. Yeah, 90s Ford design. They had uh, the, the, fo the Fox body design. That was a you know a, a kind of a risky move as well when they started to make those uh, almost generic looking cars and call it the Mustang, but I think they look cool right now because I like that boxy style. At the time, it was kind of weird because it went from a if you think about the '60s and the '70s Mustangs, and then you think about the '90s or late '80s Mustangs, it's a big big difference there. But you know everything is evolving. This is a huge step away from what Mustangs are, of course, with a four-door SUV. But time will tell whether it was the right choice or not. So here are a few other Mustangs that I just wanted to show you what people think about this. Uh, Nerd, Verbong, Remolting Car, can't believe they call this a Mustang. Uh, Utvandra Jan, so much better. Uh, the redesign, thank you. They should have called it 
The Eastang. <laughs> That's a cool name. I like the Eastang. It makes sense. You know, now that I think about it, Eastang, it's a really good name because now you're not taking the Mustang name, but you still have an essence of the Mustang name when you hear Eastang. But you're not going to tarnish the history of the Mustang lineup because it isn't called a Mustang. So Eastang would actually be a very cool name for this. Looks a lot like a Tesla Model 3. Now, I don't think it does, really. I think the proportions are, are, are a little bit different than the Musta, uh, Tesla Model 3. And this is way, oh, way over styled than the Tesla Model 3 is as simple as it gets when it comes to styling. And this to me is just a complete opposite. Although, yeah, I guess the proportions are kind of similar, but styling wise, totally different. New grill, please. That's another thing that's kind of a talking point with electric cars. How do you create the front fascia when you don't need a big grill? That's kind of a... An interesting question and uh, um, same thing here I look forward to see what manufacturers are going to do styling wise with the grill if they're going to go the Tesla route where they just cover everything up and make it body color they did the, I mean the first Tesla model S were black but then they changed it and I actually prefer when it's body colored because it just looks like a queen a clean sculpture that doesn't have too many interruptions in the design Phil Callum, sadly, there is just some turds that can't be polished. I think we, there is a turd can always be polished, <laughs> Phil, okay? That's what we're doing right here. At least we're trying. Vasily Zuru, I'm sorry, Vasily Zurovsky. I think it would have been a good car as a standalone with Mustang styling. This is the same thing that happened when they made the Holden Monaro into the new Pontiac GTO. Uh... I don't think it's the same thing because the Holden Monaro is the Australian version and the Pontiac GTO is the American version of the same car. So at least there they had the exact same car. It's just for a different continent. It's like calling Buicks here are sometimes Opals in Europe or Vauxhalls in UK are Opals in, in the rest of uh, Europe. So it's kind of weird how they do that sometimes, but it's all marketing. Uh, but this, the, the Pontiac GT and the Holden Monaro, they, that was basically the same car. So I don't think that's the same. You can't draw that reference there. But I kind of get what you're saying. They should have made it a standalone um, with Mustang styling. That would be cool and call it something else. So yeah, I just wanted to show you what people are, uh, you know, the opinions of people when it comes to this new Mustang. So what we're doing here is just we're doing the changes that I was talking about in the brief. And hopefully we can clean this up a little bit and make it simpler. That's the idea and not have it be overstyled and, you know, have it try too much. Just keep it simple and, you know, bring it down a little bit. Take it easy <laughs> with, the, with the styling. That's what we're trying to do here. I'm going to show you the before and after as always. And I want to thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. I really appreciate it. And as I said, if you feel like you want to subscribe, you might want to do that. That will mean a lot to me. And maybe we can reach that 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If you like this video, hit that like button. That will really mean a lot to me as well. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Rosie. Is it acceptable?